Okay, I'm here in this cool bus with Derek and Amy, and hi guys, and hey. I'm hoping you'll tell us about uh, your experiences in redoing this bus and what it's all about. So Yeah, so we um, started a small financial planning firm about two years ago, and in order to help our, gr our business grow and... Um, cut cost. <laughs> we sold our house and everything in it wow. and we actually bought an RV first. The RV was way too big and not cost effective at all. So sold that and decided we would go even smaller <laughs> and get a bus. So now we live in our bus with um, it's the two of us. We have a two-year-old daughter and a dog and we travel full time. And and um, how long did it take you to convert this? We chipped away at it from <clears throat> we bought it in March. Chipped away at the demo for about uh, I don't know three months, something like that. And it took Just us like about here and there because yeah. we were working full time at that time. It took us about three months to to actually build it once the demo was completely finished. And, and how long did it take you for the demo to do the, the demo took you the three months that you were chipping away at it? Yeah, yeah, yeah probably okay, a few okay. months there as well. Yeah, okay, I see. And what was the hardest part about converting it? Oh, man. In my opinion? Yeah? <laughs> I think the hardest thing was removing the ceiling. Oh. Um, I thought that that was really, like, not only was it just labor intensive, it was frustrating. And then we had no idea what we were doing when we put the new ceiling up. So that was probably the hardest thing for me. And as you can see in some places, it still is not fully complete. Um, I love the way it looks now. It's beautiful. Yeah, but it's really nice with the... Yeah, I think that I would have... I like the color you chose for it. The Thank you. Kind Thank of a bir birchwood, would you say, kind of? Yeah. That's pretty. What do you think is the hardest? Um, oh, there are so many. <laughs> there were so many. There were several obstacles. Yeah. Was we yeah. This. It was really, I mean, the, the whole project was just, like, we've never designed and built an entire house, you or know? Anything so, for that matter. yeah, we really have no experience with woodworking, metalwork, mm -hmm. uh, designing plumbing systems. Like, you know, our experience is basically uh, doing small tasks from our home, you know, and just yeah. kind of learning Fix small it, thing. Yeah. A uh, leak here, an electrical issue here, just very, very small things. So just designing the entire system, I would say as a whole, yeah, uh, was really difficult. Figuring out where things should be as far as plumbing goes, uh, electrical. We actually hired somebody to help us and kind of confirm our numbers on the electrical side because that's, that's, smart. that's yeah. a huge job. Yeah. yeah. And, and you, you just don't play with electricity. Like, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, so it, there, there were, and there were a lot of frustrations along the way, but, um, I can't really think of anything more specific than that, but I would just say design as a whole. And, um, how did you find the bus and how did you, you know, like, did that take a long time for you to find the one you wanted to buy? It did. Yeah. Uh, there seems to be consensus as far as engines go. The DT 466 is kind of the engine that everybody leans on. Uh, in the schooly community, and that's what we wanted, and we had to compromise. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what we have. It's not okay. what we have. But uh, that was kind of the first priority: was looking at the engines and the reliability of the bus itself. And we got what we think is the second best engine. It's a Cummins engine. Uh, some people even argue it's it's better than yes, the DT four six six. It's really a matter of opinion, I think. Yeah, yeah, but um, it's definitely at the, at the top of most people's list. So we did have a little bit of time to decide on a bus, which was nice. Um, so we were able to do research and we just kind of looked every day and if we found the perfect bus, we would buy it. We bought our bus on eBay. Mm, okay, um, and there are was, a lot of them out there on eBay. We've yeah, been looking which, at that. Yeah. Which we actually were not looking on eBay. We've been looking on govdeals.org and different auction type places and just couldn't find the right bus or couldn't get an auction couldn't win an auction and um found this on ebay 
guy uh, delivered it to us. And, wow. Yeah. Well, that was going to be my next question because I know you can't drive them without a CDL while they have the seats in, while they're still uh, registered as a bus. So I was going to ask that question. How did you get it? And was it far from your house when, where you bought it? It or? wasn't. We were looking at buses all over the U.S. because we were at that point of, like, we would be willing if it was the right bus. Um, but this guy happened to be in North Georgia, and we're from Atlanta, so... Wow. Yeah, it was... Wow, that was meant to be, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> and he drove it all the way to us. He drove it to Stone Mountain for us. So wow. we only had to drive it, like, a mile. But I didn't even know that that was a, a law. I thought it was, yeah. like, 16 passengers... Yeah, no, I, that's, that's what I'm hearing from everybody that, you know, once you take the seats out, then it's no longer, a I guess, vehicle, yeah, kind of so deal. then you're okay, but while you have the seats in, that you hmm. just have to have the CDL, or you have to get somebody that has a CDL to deliver it hmm. for you. Yeah, I had no so, idea. Yeah, so that's kind of a cool thing. And did you have any surprises when you started, like, the teardown, as far as the condition of the bus, or was everything pretty much the way you expected? It was yeah, good? Yeah, it was actually in great shape and we had heard and read up on horror stories yeah people, yeah, just removing yeah. The, the floors and just really really deep rust which was the reason we wanted to do it too yeah. to yeah. see what was underneath and everything was i mean there was a small leak uh in this back corner and where the the insulation was just slightly discolored and you could tell that there was some moisture there but aside from that the insulation um was in great condition wow. it was still a, a nice yellow and uh there were very it was surface rust spots here and there but overall it was in you great, really great lucked shape. out with that didn't yeah. you okay so tell me what this is over here that's our ac unit oh okay so and does it heat and cool or just it does not okay they make a unit that does that Okay. But the reviews were saying that because there were extra components in it, it broke easier or something, this one got much better reviews. And we have a small space heater, and that's plenty for us. So we went with that, and we love it. It does a, an amazing job. Okay. And if, if uh, people want to learn more about you guys and your travels and all that, how would they get a hold of you? The Frugal RVer, that's us. Uh, the Frugal RVer on Facebook, on Instagram, the Frugal RVer dot com. The Frugal RVer, the Frugal RVer. Okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> got it. <laughs> and I see something up here that's intriguing me a little. That has nothing to do with buses, but uh, what is solid lotion? So solid lotion is an extra income stream for us um, when we're on the road. So um, we make it right here in the bus. Um, and it is actually a lotion that it looks like a bar of soap and you rub it on kind of like a bar of soap, oh, but it's lotion. So um, we sell them at festivals like this and it just gives us a little bit of extra money and it just is just made with beeswax, coconut oil, shea butter, and essential oils. Oh, cool. Very cool. So it's really good for your skin and fun and to make. And Etsy at the frugal rv yeah we're on the too and we sell these yeah. Yeah, excellent okay yeah. and before we go is there anything you'd like that you would tell somebody like me that we're just starting out on this journey for doing a bus do you just, have gotta, any? just gotta do it uh, <laughs> i think that um the whole world should live in a school bus no i'm just kidding it's not for everybody but um we would encourage people that if you're thinking about it that it's for us it really has cut costs tremendously it's so worth it. We have so much fun. It's not a tiny space. Like it, be, it looks like it from the outside. And then we have, we have a two-year-old daughter that plays around and has a blast. And we get to see the country at the same time. And it's just, yeah, it's a really fun life. And we're we, in, we're in Florida now. Yeah. Seven days ago we were in Moab. We were in Utah. Yeah. A week before that we were where? New Mexico. <laughs> Yeah, New Mexico, Santa Fe, Albuquerque, and we've been to Vegas and Lake yeah. Tahoe, all over. Oh, Crater nice. Lake. We've done all that in the past three and a half months. We've done more in the past three and a half months than we have in our entire life combined. We've seen more, we've done more, we've had great experiences. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Thank you guys very much. Yeah, sure. thank you.